wholeheartedly welcome Kumar Rupwan, the president of Adhyay Society, and the cordial audience for gracing and adding value to this vibrant session. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce you to Adhyay, the Civil Services Society of IIT Madras BS. Adhyay Society is a one of a kind initiative run by the students that aims to create an ecosystem of passionate civil services aspirants to converge and converse. It aims to create an environment of growth and learning for the student community to cultivate a set of desirable qualities and for various domains. We at IIT Madras are brimmed with enthusiasm to have one of India's brightest mind and the embodiment of determination, Mr. Ashi Sinha IRS. Sir will share his invaluable insights on data revolution in governance, which will provide us information about how, da how data is helping us all to improve the performance, efficiency, and transparency of public services and policies. Ashish Sir cleared the UPSC exam in 2010, joining the Indian Revenue Services. He is currently posted as Deputy Director General of Shipping in Mumbai, and at the same time, Sir is also pursuing his diploma degree at IIT Madras PS. Mr. Ashish Sinha is a great epitome of inspiration for all of us because of the dedication he shows on the field and at the same time his thirst for knowledge by continuing his learning journey at IIT Madras. We are sincerely delighted to have him here as our guest today. And we eagerly anticipate the valuable insight and inspiring thoughts he impart to us. We consider it a tremendous privilege to have you here among us, sir. I kindly request you to please take the forum and address our eagerly anticipated audience. Please, sir. Thank you so much uh, for this uh, kind introduction, first of all. I thank Adhyay Society also, which is a part of Indian Institute of Technology in Madras, which is dealing in civil services. And uh, this sort of forum is very much needed in every college uh, so that people can go ahead and seek their uh, professional help from their seniors and superiors, what they are seeking for. I also thank uh, Kumar Upman, who has been chasing me for quite some time. And uh, I was not able to give time to him due to my engagements over and over again here in the Director General of Shipping. Uh, but uh, finally, I said that I will definitely give in and I'll have a word with all my fellow mates uh, who are pursuing this particular course, which I am really, really proud of. And I am taking this course after 20 years of my passing out from college. So I am I'm, I'm really happy that uh, I'm engaging with young people around here. So uh, starting with my journey, I would like to give, uh, you have given a lot of things about me, but I'll also talk about my, uh, how I joined uh, civil services and what are the things which, uh, which made sure that, uh, uh, not made sure you can say what you can say um, uh, guided me at one point of time or other at what is to be done so uh, everybody has will have their own story and i have my own so i joined uh, my engineering course from 99 to 2003 in chadapur university i did my marine engineering there so from 2003 till uh, from 99 to 2003 i did my marine engineering from chadapur university those days it was uh, the exam was conducted through JE. So JE was the exam. So I had this flavor of exam and we were put in the extended list of JE. So those people who were in the extended list who are not going to get IITs at that point of time. So I'm talking about like 20 years, 1999 was like way ahead. So two decades before when there were only five IITs and uh, there was even IIT Ruki was not a part of IIT at that point of time. IIT Guwahati had just come in at that point. Uh, at that point of time but still we got a rank i got a rank of something around 4000 but uh, that 4000 was not good enough to get into iit so that thing was always there so that 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 you carry on because you put so much of effort for those two years for uh, preparation of iit but eventually uh, uh, jadapur was good enough and uh, i did my marine engineering from there and uh, after completing my graduation, I joined a company called Great Eastern uh, Shipping Company, which is an Indian shipping company. And I sailed there as a junior engineer for uh, 10 months uh, on board a vessel. So I, I, I worked on the ship. I, I, I worked on that ship and then I came down. 
and in shipping just like uh, in uh, driving car you have to get a license so with each uh, degree when you go ahead for each rank when you go ahead you have to clear an examination and get that license which is called competency examination so that competency of examination is conducted by dg shipping so i had some idea that what dg shipping is at that point of time and i wanted to know that what is the dg shipping which is conducting this exam so i found that there is dg shipping is usually an ias guy and he is sitting at the top who is taking care of the examination but i had only this part of the idea that there is something called dg shipping and uh, he that particular organization takes an examination and uh, this dg shipping has got lot of verticals so one of the verticals is uh, called the mercantile marine department which is engaged in taking examination so mercantile marine department is placed in kolkata it is there in mumbai it is there in chennai it is there in gujarat so there are some five six mmds are there which we call in a short mercantile marine department uh, which take their exam, which give us our competency certificate so once we clear that exam then we again go board uh, go on a ship with a higher uh, pay package and all those things and uh, with a greater responsibility as well so after getting down going to my second ship i found that it is a very monotonic life the life is very similar that what i have seen in my first ship there's nothing great i mean you are visiting ports and all that that excitement goes away after first sail eventually when you are visiting so many places and all that so the second in the second time also it was very monotonic so, and i was not performing very well in my college so i could not sit for uh, what you call as the cream of the uh, mb exams you know so because at that point of time they used to check your 10th marks your 12th marks as well as uh, your marks how you are performing in your college uh, to get into an, any of the iams lead iams which you can say of and most of the people were moving to that iam sector after uh, if they are moving from this particular uh, shift they wanted from marine background they if they are moving into that management so what is the only goal we have left with i mean either i could have pursued my marine engineering which was good they were paying good I, i was getting a pretty decent salary at that point of time which was more than a lakh rupees in 2004 and uh, which i am which which i was not getting when i joined the service actually so that was uh, that was something i uh, pros and cons which we have to also consider that uh, where how far can you go and uh, eventually uh, dg shipping was definitely one of the uh, pivotal uh, character in my life because my college was also governed by dg shipping at that that point of time so any representative from dg shipping if it used to come to the college the whole college used to turn topsy turvy and everyone was running behind that that representative was that so even dg was not coming so uh, being in the government uh, and any person coming from the government side like from the ministry or uh, from the representative from dg shipping so i was just was just intrigued by that what are these fellows who are coming here and my professors are dancing in their tunes uh, usually we dance on the tunes of the professor when we are in the college so uh, this sort of thing was always like in the back of my mind that something like this is happening so it is better to join that side of the you know and uh, let let me take uh, things in my hand because they have made my life pretty miserable when i was in college so eventually I, i thought that why not give it a chance so i started um, looking into uh, what this ias exam and civil services exam is all about so this trend was not there in my college let me tell you very frankly in college my trend was uh, very much uh, into mba and uh, the marine field which people are actually going in but slowly uh, i was one of uh, when i and one of my friend we thought that we should give it a try and uh, why not give civil services a very very serious uh, this thing and um, it was uh, mathematics was one of the subject which was coming in civil services and as i have told that we have worked uh, very hard for our je examination i have never ever put in that much efforts in my life uh, after giving the je examination i thought that civil services is not that difficult if we are comparing it to je but yeah there were some apprehensions which was there in my mind let me first clarify that the first apprehension was that ki while giving the je examination we had a selected uh, group of uh, aspirants who were applying for je who are only uh, uh, cons- uh, who main uh, con- uh, subjects are only science subject yeah physics chemistry and uh, mathematics however in upsc we have a, va- a varied uh, subjects and people from 
all sections of the society having different uh, 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 subjects they appear for the examination so this uh, total population set itself is a very different uh, in both the examinations plus in that examination in je i got 4000 rank and in uh, upsc there is only 1000 seats so this was one of the apprehension which i started with like how to clear this apprehension that i am good enough to actually sit for this exam and uh, crack this so that was these are some of the negative things which do come into your mind and you start with some apprehension that this is not going to be an easy task for sure but uh, uh, once you get in and once you start i i try to recollect my uh, my thought process and how positive i used to be in spite of these things which used to come uh, even my father was very apprehensive that uh, usually upsc is for people who are uh, you know toppers in their uh, school college and all that thing and you already have a job you have to quit your job and you have to um, uh, give this exam so i just told him that i will give it a try if i am good enough then i'll at least clear up the first uh, hurdle which is called the prelims if i am not good enough then i'll go back to my sailing days and uh, so he said fine then if that is the thought you are having thought process you are having then go ahead so i i gave my examination in my first attempt i took valiantly uh, mathematics as one of my subjects and uh, i failed miserably so i failed in the pre in my first attempt itself and uh, i told my father now i have failed so i am going back and then my father actually pushed me he said that that's not what i actually meant it is important that since you have the time and the age limit which is there in the upsc so when i started i started it till late i had only three attempts with me uh, because at that point of time only till 30 years you can give the examination in our particular category uh, you cannot go beyond that which is i believe 32 now and there are six or six attempts if i am not wrong if kumar if you can just confirm six attempts for example so yeah yeah so uh, it is six attempts now previously it was only four attempts and 30 years now it is 32 years and six attempts so anyway so what i mean to say is that my father then pushed me and he said that you should not you should give your best you have started it then you finish it off don't just go back and uh, turn your back on this because you can go you can try again and again and again so anyway so to cut the long story short i got uh, in my third attempt it is uh, and um, uh, when i look back i can say what mistakes i did i i can find out and i can find tune even uh, the, i was also like what you can say a very uh, um, adamant would be a, not a right word but uh, i would say that ki, uh there have been instances when you have to think that what is to be done because i have taken mathematics as my main subject and i was working on it and in mains examination out of 600 i just got 66 marks putting both the subjects together which is very very bad so even i mean history or some other subject had i have taken you know you just have to write something and uh, you can get better marks out of that so this thing this i have been told by a lot of people who were actually preparing but i was adamant that i will give it with mathematics only which i think i was i did not do right because uh, uh, end of the day when i in my batch who has qualified so in the second rank uh, that fellow has taken mathematics and physics and he has got 400 marks in each subject and that's why he was second but uh, i was getting only 66 uh, marks so anshuman i cleared it in uh, 2010 and i joined in 2010 so <clears throat> what i was saying is that so in the last uh, uh, attempt what subjects has to be taken because i was sure that i cannot go up with mathematics now because it is going not giving me the result which i want so i shifted from mathematics to public administration after giving my prelims with mathematics so after giving my prelims with mathematics i shifted with uh, public administration and i i got some 3 4 months to study that particular subject i was doing very good in my general studies and i was sure that i will because i have been giving my mains examination in general studies not only for in uh, upsc uh, civil service exam but also for practice i used to go and sit for the indian forest service examination as well so that i can practice uh, what is what sort of trend would be going to come in the upcoming uh, civil service examination of the 
UPSC. So for mains, I used to sit for uh, just like that for mathematics and this, uh, uh, general studies. I used to go and sit for the uh, foreign service examination as well. Eventually, uh, when I shifted my subject from uh, mathematics to public administration, it proved definitely as a boon to me because I got 293 out of 600 marks. So from 66, I jumped from to 293 with not that much effort which I was giving in mathematics. So definitely it helped me and I got uh, very good marks in my general studies as well. So I got something around 324 out of 600 in uh, GS at that point of time. Uh, so it was it was very decent. The on, uh, but I thought that I got selected because of my interview. Because I thought that my interview went very well. But when the actually the marks came out, I got uh, very poor marks in my interview, which you can say that it was I, I would I would say that it was below standard marks in my interview. Uh, my interview was taken by uh, then a professor called uh, Professor Balaguru Swami, uh, whose computer books which we used to read in our college. Uh, for like basic and cobal and all that that those sort of texts he used to write and he asked me a question that internet has destroyed our culture so in my mind that i i thought that this is a, I, I have to actually negate this particular topic and i i i i, I talked a lot about negating the topic that internet has just not destroyed our culture however i think uh, they must have uh, observed me for 20 odd minutes and gave me uh, a below average mark which i would say so eventually I got 126 marks in um, my interview uh, out of 150, no, sorry, out of uh, 300, uh, which I believe is very, very bad because 150 is like anyone can go and breeze easily. One can get uh, 150 marks and you can see that the difference of uh, 150 minus 124, which is 26 marks is a huge jump in your total score because in every mark, there are like five, six people who are there. So if there is a jump of 24 marks, your uh, not only your score will improve, your uh, uh, what you can say, your uh, uh, ranking will improve according to your service may change. So this is there that uh, as of now, till now, I, I feel that I in my life, I I always got I always got the second position, not the first one because I never got JE. I I wanted to become an IAS, but I got an IRS. So. That thing is always there in my back of my mind that, okay, so I have to still try hard and hard and hard. So eventually when I joined, uh, so this is the story of civil services that uh, I got through and uh, I joined the services in, in the Indian Revenue Service, which is also a fantastic organization, income tax. It's a fantastic organization. I have no background in taxation at that point of time. Neither I had any background in economics or uh, commerce or balance sheet and all that. but. Uh, IRS has opened a new opportunity and it has given me a lot of uh, satisfaction working there. We will talk about it later, but uh, I would like to take some questions from uh, our friends who are joined here regarding civil services first. And then I will come down and how data and all that, uh, which this has come in the uh, governance part. Yeah. OK, so we do have a few questions from the participants. And one of them is, what tips and advices would you like to give to beginners who just started preparing for UPSC and what approach they should use? So uh, first thing is definitely one has to do the SWOT analysis. What is their strength and uh, uh, their weakness? So weakness has to be found out. Like I was, as I have told you that I have been very, very adamant that I will give with mathematics because I have done so much mathematics during my uh, JE time and also sometime in college. That uh, So I was very sure that I am very good in maths. So, and also that in prelims, I was making very good. Uh, uh, I mean, I was, it was a cakewalk for prelims. Uh, in mathematics, but in mains examination, it was a different ball game altogether. Like we used to say that in prelims, you know, you 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 have to know um, uh, what is that? Uh, you have to know everything about everything. But on the other hand, uh, in mains, you have to know specific thing about something. So in something, you have to be absolutely specific. You have to know everything about that particular topic. In uh, on the on the contrary, in preliminary, you have to know some. You know, you have to have some shallow knowledge about everything so that you can mark those questions uh, like so gs if i go 
GS has got uh, six or seven main components which you have to have uh, good understanding. And uh, so one is uh, Indian history, geography, polity, uh, something about uh, science. Uh, then if I'm not wrong, something about international relations also. International relations is also a good topic in GS, which they keep on asking. And I think statistics is now a different subject altogether, right? So they don't ask statistics now, um, or what we call mental ability and all that. So that has come in CSAT, I believe, right? So CSAT is yes. taking care of uh, your statistics and those uh, mental ability type questions. And maths question as well. So, uh, so this is, uh, you have to start with NCRT. So the old NCRT text, which is available in the market, you have to go through that constitution at work. And uh, so for the polity thing, and also for the history, those three textbooks, which is there for medieval, uh, ancient and modern history. So you have to go through over and over again, try to make your own notes out of it. And then you can have a better understanding of, so that is what the basic level where you will be along, you will, Right, you appreciate that what other people are, uh, are also doing in this particular field. So NCRT text is something which is definitely there. You can, so once you start using NCRT for geography or economics or all the things, so those basic stuff is definitely covered in NCRT. You have to make your own notes out of it. And how will you, uh, you, you know, as you are all uh, in college right now, so I would suggest that, and you are doing this course also, so that, an analytical skill you have to develop that how can you use this particular topic and thread it with the other topic and how can you cogently you know in with clarity of thought how can you make those two topics work together or n number of topics you know then you can make an answer out of your own like uh, so that's the beauty of upsc that it gives you it it opens some of the avenues it, uh, your horizon expands and you start to integrate with uh, various topics also you know you can move from one topic to the other and you you can integrate all of them together but you have to have some analytical skills to understand that. so analytical skill is very important and uh, from this gs point of view these five six subjects if you are good with uh, i mean if you start with ncrt and then you have to develop like all those standard textbook of dd basu and whatever is there i don't recollect at this point of time uh, similarly for geography also for history also but the fundamental is ncrt text which is uh, which has been written fantastically by the authors and the old ncrt text not the new ones uh, i will not advise that you should go with the new ones that's what i, I would say yeah yes sir uh, so we do have another question it is how important is it to have a plan b yeah, so that's very good and important question. You see, uh, I had a job, so I already I have done some job in my shipping sector, and I could and I uh, as I have told you that I have that competency license, so I can always go back and uh, do this uh, my job which I was doing at that point of time. In fact, I will tell you that between the mains and interview, the there is a five six months break, and uh, I used to go back on ships for the small coastal uh, trips and all that. And this is important because this was also giving me money. I did not, I was not very really happy to ask money from my father because to sustain also for a year uh, in Delhi, uh, you need around a back to 1.5 to 2 lakh rupees because uh, that was so uh, on while on ship, you get pretty decent salary and you just pocket that amount and it is good for rest of your year. So plan B is very, very essential. I mean, say, because what happens is that you're putting your prime age of your life you know between 25 to 30 or 32 whatever it may be uh for this particular examination and if it does not work out and in most of the cases it won't work out i don't think the friends whom i was preparing with none of them qualified so it, i mean i'm not saying that it's just me who is qualified and all that but plan b is essential without plan b you will fall flat after you know those that much of struggle which you have done and you will see that you are landing nowhere but it, thankfully, in uh, when you are preparing for UPSC, you you don't find people who are immature. So they are very mature. Yeah, they become mature. It is not like after failing in J, people are committing suicide and all that. People don't do that in, after they complete their UPSC examinations that they are contemplating suicide. Uh, they they will find some way or other to you know uh, manage their life. But eventually, what I will say that uh, it is very, very important that if you have got some sort of backup with respect to some job, it is always good. Yeah. 
Okay. There should be a plan. Uh, sir, there's another question. Think about of plan B because, what was because the UPSC is. Yeah. What I wanted to say is that UP is not selecting people, it is actually rejecting people. So that is what it is to understand in a very, very important manner that UPS is not in any examination of UPS. You go for even for that uh, NDA examination and all that. There are so many people who are actually applying. They are not selecting it. And I have some people who have worked as joint secretary in UPSC as my boss. And I have been also interacting with them that how do this all examination happens with the scaling and all that. There are so many RTIs and uh, people in the CSAT has come how people how are you selecting it? They are not selecting it. We are actually rejecting it. We are rejecting it and whatever is left. So we are the residual people, which is, you know, just like slag you can save. So these are the things who are left at the end of the day. That is what is being selected. So, and there's no difference between uh, those one to 500 or 800 people who are being selected at the end of that uh, examination, because it's a very, very, um, uh, the whole process is, very uh it turns your uh, system in a very positive manner actually i would say yeah for sure okay so sir what was the most difficult part of your preparation journey and how did you overcome it well uh difficult part as i have said that it was the time when you have to decide uh, what subjects you have to choose because that is I mean, there is no study done on that, that which subject is good and which subject is bad. So general studies, what, what should be your second subject? Or uh, Nowadays, there is only one subject I believe I've heard. No, in my time, we have two subjects and how to take up those subjects uh, was a big challenge and uh, how to mix and match. So that was the only thing I think. And uh, guidance and coaching uh, definitely is one of the they were your peer group how how many of them are actually uh, able to help you and guide you at uh, because there will be very very challenging times when financially also you are, at some point of time uh, you're not going to very uh, you will be challenged when you are preparing uh, there will be odd things which will be happening at your home uh, somebody may pass away at some point of time the health issue might come that you have fallen sick um, I'll suggest not to get into any relationship here at this point of time. You have to be very, very focused. So just, no, because I've, I've been seeing what is happening. Therefore, I'm just saying that you just, just like that horse, they put a blindfold in front of that. So just keep and just see the textbook and the, uh, and the, the drawing board where you are working on. Interact with your friends. It's a good discussion. Go ahead and keep the goal in your mind that uh, what is to be done and uh, there have been times when we were trying to decode that what this examination is all about and uh, what sort of questions are being asked so in there are four sets of paper in prelims like a b c d so when we started to look back in previous year paper we saw that end of the day this is also a government people who are setting the paper so there has to be some way uh, they are uh, their slackness also comes into light and that was one of the loopholes which i found out in mathematics paper especially that if there is a question paper in set a the question one will start from this particular topic the if that's in set b the question will start from this topic if it is in set c it will start at this topic and d it will start from this topic and then that top uh, after 15 questions you will get this topic and so for each set i have prepared that that thing was on my mind so where i have to attack first so when for the first prelims when I gave the first question was statics, statics and dynamics question which I was not very good at and I struggled to solve that question for like 15 minutes and I could not solve that particular question so it so your confidence get hurt uh, at that point of time and eventually it affects your whole paper but if you know that from seeing your set only if you can make out that oh my coordinate geometry is at that particular place I mean in that particular region and I'm good at that at that particular uh, topic so i can solve that fast and it will give me a lot of confidence at the very go first go so i i found out that this was an interesting um, strategy which i used and some of my friends also used to find out that uh, how to solve those questions which they are good at so and to solve them fast so that 
we are not going to touch some uh, portions of the subject which we are not good at at all so we knew, we knew that from beforehand that how to manage our time because time is also one of the key thing here so in 2 hours you have to solve all the questions and uh, do the journey yeah yes sir so we do have a question from anshuman and he wanted to ask that uh, you would have probably been touched with the new generation ias officers like who just qualified a year or two back what are the qualities you have observed in them and how you know how they would have prepared and from where like what are your thoughts See, on uh, that process right i am i am not that old that uh, <laughs> so it's been just been 10 and 12 years actually so it's it's not that uh, things have been you know there has been a gigantic change in the preparation modes and all that plus when you are in service we don't usually discuss that how was your mode of preparation uh with some uh, certain people who are like you know you talk about these with some very selected group of people like with your batchmates only and it's a process and we all understand uh, that uh, uh, we all understand that uh, uh, everyone has got their own story so the new generation of ias or the civil servants they also have their own story because things some patterns have definitely changed like you know you have to keep on doing some strategy as i have discussed this strategy which we have done during our um, uh, preparation period or we have applied this theory in uh, uh, examination also like i have also told that uh, to understand the trend of examination we used to give uh, foreign forest service examination as well so when forest service examination used to happen i used to understand that okay now uh, this is the this type of question might come in civil services examination and let me prepare accordingly that and that helped that helped me a lot especially in mathematics for sure that it it definitely helped uh, i i won't say for general studies because there is a whole set of question in general studies uh, but the trend of examination like in mathematics if there is question number 1 it will usually had question either from linear algebra or from you know coordinate geometry or something like that in forest service examination when the last time i was giving so they they so question number 1 a b c d they had for each sub categories like they had linear algebra coordinate geometry and all that which was which used to be a separate uh, section for each okay. but now they have started mixing all of them together so i understood that this is what is going to happen in civil service means examination as well and that it, it was so it gives you an idea that how upsc is actually thinking so you just have to be little more creative and imaginative that how, what can be done so this is just one of the tips uh, uh, tips i can give which i have observed in my own preparation day uh, with regard to current generation um, i what i find these days that uh, uh, the language paper i mean the language which i mean is like the people who are having hindi as a background and they are writing their answers in hindi and other languages that has gone down uh usually uh, after implementation of csat uh, the number of uh, pe uh, people having a background in engineering and medical profession they are uh, doing much much better they are performing better in the civil services with respect to the people who are having a background in arts department so that that i am observing these days yeah we have discussed about this among our friends also like this is happening now this is a trend which usually when we uh, in 2009 10 uh, uh, we used to have those belts from bihar and uttar pradesh and delhi so this belt was uh, very uh, uh, prominent in the results but now it is the trend has changed so now we can see a lot of people from maharashtra andhra pradesh telangana tamil nadu so these people are uh, from this particular section a uh, lot of selection is being done so that sort of analysis can be done like you know a uh, geo special analysis can be done that how people are getting selected that that would be very interesting to see yeah uh, yes sir so so one of the most important question at this point of time uh, what should be our strategy for the remaining time that we have before prelims like we have just few more months left okay. before prelims so what should be our strategy plan right now Okay, so when is the prelims examination? I don't know. These days, uh, it's it's in May or May. sometime. May, yes. Okay, so yeah, yeah. 
so abhi to kafi time hai in that point of view uh, if you are starting right now see give your focus on gs gs is something which is very important and uh, now ethics paper is also coming in is ethics a part of the prelims examination as well no it's not right so those seven topics which i have shared like uh, current affairs uh, geography history polity and uh, whatever i mean those portions i believe you all be must be knowing so start from uh, your get your fundamentals cleared from ncert ncert is the best way to start with for because they start in a very good and in a in a pace which people can understand and grasp they are regardless of their background whatever they are having so it is very good that you should have that ncert thing and try to make your own notes out of ncert current affairs of course uh, there are so many um, i mean web, web pages are there i mean sources are there from where you can get those current affairs and uh, uh, so current affairs has to be given importance as well science and technology and all those subjects which is there so every day keep on reading and plus this uh, international relationship this uh, these are also very important interesting and important topics yeah okay so how do you manage your work and family commitments along with this diploma degree yeah so uh, before coming to that uh, let me take, uh, tell you something about the family also i met my wife uh, when i was doing uh, my uh, after passing the civil service examination and we go for training So I met my wife in my training uh, to uh, this thing uh, when we were doing our foundation course and uh, training. And she is from uh, she got a better rank than me. She, I, I, I let me tell you my rank also. So I, my rank was two hundred and seventy eight, uh, and I was uh, allotted in uh, revenue service income tax. She uh, was uh, her rank was one ninety two. Okay, and uh, she did not take uh, IPS, and uh, she took Indian Revenue Service Customs and Central Excise. so she is in customs and central excise we are both additional commissioner at this point of time and uh, she is not from a science background so she is she is uh, in fact uh, she has done uh, journalism from delhi university and she was working with uh, financial express for some time and then she also moved and uh, to civil services uh, and then she she got it uh, in her second attempt actually and she had got all the four attempts left with her but eventually she married with me and she said that i am not more any more interested in giving the exam so let let us see how things shape up so family wise she is equally busy as i am busy yeah so kids are a challenge that and we are say, staying at different places actually so i am right now in bombay and she is right now in delhi we could have come together but uh, because my children are uh, uh, doing their schooling and uh, everything in uh, delhi and they are perfectly settled there so i did not want to move them uh, i joined dg shipping because uh, as i have told that i was al- always inclined to join civil services because to find out that what dg shipping is so there was a opportunity in dg shipping so i my wife only told me that there is a vacancy in dg shipping and you can just go and have a, your experience there so i joined i am coming back from dg shipping this 30th is my last day in dg shipping 30th november and i'll be coming back to delhi and i'll be joining my parent cadre in income tax in fact i'll be joining there in the systems directorate there where uh, there is something called risk assessment uh, exercise is being carried out in a very very um, you know major way and which is all about data and uh, so definitely i am very looking very forward for this uh regarding why i wanted to join this particular um, course yeah let me so there is a story about everything as i have told you so i thought that okay now chill there is nothing more to be done once you um, get through your civil services and so but as soon as you join your uh, foundation courses in the academy you see that there is steep drop in your intellectual level no so, because that that much focus which you used to give for the examination you come very very relaxed from the day you join the services you know well you get easy money and there's no classes you those classes are actually bullshit so so you just have to pass your time and give some boring examination and all that but you just roam around so those 16 months is so much fun so uh, so it's a, like a paid holiday and all that so but your intellectual level definitely drops it's not at the same level 
so and you know uh, uh, people join civil services to get that babu feeling that okay file ban gaya maise sign karunga and that is what i have to do <laughs> but things change very very rapidly you know uh, so in 2015 what happened that uh, I, i was posted in chennai uh, due to certain uh, personal reason my mother was getting treatment uh, treated there in chennai then and we moved back to delhi so uh, as i moved back to delhi there was a very small unit called risk assessment unit which was uh, formed at that point of time in 2015 which said something about data and all that which i had no idea about so i thought that okay some analyst and all that so so people would be there but when i joined there was no one there so there was only me my commissioner and uh, my additional commissioner was there so only three four this we were the group of the people who were there and uh, we were given some task ki bhai kuch karke dikhao data beta kya hota hai you know you do something out of it so first of all where to get this data from so, so there are some some issues with it so we started looking into it and then we thought that okay hamare paas to resources hi nahi hai matlab we we don't know anyone so we have to hire people and all that thing so that was going on a separate uh, mode eventually uh, what the best thing that i got was an apple laptop at that point of time so the best laptop pro and all that whatever you can think of uh, you you can get that so i said okay fine i'll i'll go and join this particular unit and uh, see what can be done but <clears throat> you cannot open it when we started getting data from banks so we asked some certain data from bank i won't go in detail that what sort of data it was so but that data was like uh, having more than 10 lakh rupees you can say, uh, let, let me tell you that so we were not able to open that data set because excel has a limitation of uh, some 10 lakh 48000 rupees so what to be done was the first challenge that how to open this data we don't know that we have never heard about this dot csv files and all that at that point of time so somebody said that there's some software called sas which which can do anything it's a very great data and all that and a lot of people keep on pitching the government uh, services from nic there are people who used to come and visit us that there is a software called sas you purchase it that's a license software of 25 lakh rupees for one one desktop we thought that okay fine whatever so we we procured that particular software which nobody was able to run that that's the whole idea was that ki it's something like python and uh, which is an open source but nobody knew about python at that point of time because uh, there are people in the industry who fools us one way or the other and uh, otherwise we could have started using working on python start away straight away at that point of time. anyways we got sas and we started to figure out something out of it so, So that was 2015. By 2016, November 8th, uh, Pradhan Mantri introduced uh, something called, which we known as uh, what was that thing? That money exchange, which which was done. That you have to return those money, na? What was it called? Demonetization. Demonetization. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So that demonetization thing happened on 8th November uh, 2016. and then data started to flow in from banks that uh, today this much deposit has come this, this much deposit has come this is the pan number and all that and so there is a organization called financial intelligence unit which collects all this data so financial from financial intelligence unit that data has to be given to income tax department to do the analysis and find out that if, what sort of trend is going on <clears throat> thankfully uh, by that time we had some understanding about how to you know trade with data and how to tackle data some resources we have also had by that time and we were quite ready i won't say quite ready i mean we were just just ready you can say so that data set was uh, you know every day we used getting some data set of uh, 1 crore night i mean the number of rows were 1 crore and a more and to from that we have to pull our income tax return data and to collate them and to find out that how many people and what so that was a good exercise which we did and it was very very satisfying but i thought at that point of time this is not going to work in a long run i mean we are domain experts from the income tax side but we don't have any expertise <clears throat> with respect to the tech side or you know the data side and um, we were i mean we are totally dependent on the resources which we have hired so whatever they are going to tell us we have to actually if they say there are some one crore rows we have to say okay fine there there can be some rows which can be taken out by them you know which is very interesting to so what i'm saying is that uh, if we know both the sides then our story is uh, much 
better. So I thought that it is important that we have to learn about these uh, new trends which is coming up. And just by opening this and playing around is not sufficient. You have to delve deep into it. And data is present everywhere. I mean, demonetization was just one of the examples which I have given. The data is there everywhere and we are totally dependent on data and everything is data driven by the Sarkar or whether it is an entrepreneur or an enterprise, whatever. Everyone is keeping their data very safely and they are taking and very serious uh, interventions are done with respect to data. Um, so my superiors, they said at that point of time that you should do something in this particular field. And in 2018, I applied for some universities in the United States and I joined one of the university called Indiana University there uh, for public policy uh, with the specialization in uh, data science at that point of time. So that was a two year course, uh, which I did uh, to understand more on this particular aspect of data and database management, blah, 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 what those things which were there. Uh, so I took a lot of courses and it was a very good experience and I totally enjoyed it. I came back and uh, I joined, I found out that uh, IIT is also offering something. Uh, at that point of time, my father was just retired. So I asked him that you have pushed my life to join uh, JE and all that. Why don't you come along with me and we will do, both give this examination together and uh, let's see how it comes out to be. So now you are free and you don't have any work. So he took up the challenge as well. So we went together for, to give the examination and we both cleared. And he has done some, some courses also, not Python and all that he could not do, but he did some five, six courses he, he, did, he did, but he's still uh, behind me that we should do more courses. And um, so my mother passed away in, in the meanwhile. So we just took a gap. But we have we have joined again. And since I was in Bombay and he was in Delhi, so it was difficult for him to do some subjects. So we thought that, OK, let me come back and we will do it together again. So this semester, we have also taken a break. We have so this was the last semester because I was finding very, very difficult uh, for this particular semester to carry on with my subjects and with uh, 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 with my office work. Uh, the thing which I want to say is that uh, uh, Kunwar uh, has asked me to come last month also, but last month there was a Global India Maritime Summit, which was attended by at least 38 countries. And that was a huge summit which was uh, going on in Mumbai and a lot of effort was made for that. Again, data was very important thing there because everything is based on data and all those. Uh, so I was very busy in that. So I could not find a way to give my 100% in this particular course. So I have taken, so this flexibility is very good in IIT Madras course that when you want, you can join the course when you are comfortable, you do it for those three, four months, find time for two, th two three hours and just go for it. My wife is not very keen. I, she gets her data job done by me. She is not totally, she is whatever data she wants to you know, get it crunched that, that, that I have to do. And eventually she presents it everywhere and uh, whatever, but it, that's fine. But I have asked her to do it, but, but she is not, but she has got her own um, occupation. I mean, she's occupied not only with the job, but the kids as well. So she has to take care of that as well. And the family and those things has to be also taken off. So she's not finding time for that. Yeah. So <clears throat> what I end of the story, I want to say is that data is uh, omnipresent and uh, it's a very good uh, time that artificial intelligence and machine learning, those things are coming up. I would like to see more uh, things which will be taken up, not only in my department, in every department, take either AS or, so they also know that what are the things which is important for them and uh, what data they are collecting. You know, political parties, everyone is doing that. I mean, it is, we all know that where, who are their target audiences and they find it out how to enhance, what is to be done, what are the platforms to be used. So. It is all there, and uh, how how this public uh, good can be done through data is something. This is a revolution which I am seeing in front of my eyes. Previously, there was uh, I don't think previously people used to think like this. Yeah, uh, I, when I joined at that point of time, the income tax refund used to come after three or four or maybe five months. I don't know. Today, it does not take more than twenty days to get your refund once all your processes done. So it is all because of this automation and data science and data mining 
which keeps on going and uh, things have become very fast smooth transparent plus you don't have to go to your office someone's office uh, grease someone someone's palms to get the job done people are becoming more and more uh, and it's good for the society as well as for the government as well as for the people that data is being used for their own good yeah so sir as we are talking about data right now uh, how important is the role of ai and ml in governance yeah so these are all funny terms actually in ai and ml uh, people don't know much about it uh, people try to fool also that this is what ai is what is ml is so when we talk about uh, predictive analytics and time series and all those analysis which needs to be done uh, those things are not done at this point of time in uh, a very cohesive manner i mean there is i have not seen any scientific study which has been done per se from machine learning point of view so what today people are doing is mostly uh, the analysis which they have the data and how from that data the maximum they can find out that what is the uh, you know either they are looking for frauds and those transactions something like that can be done at this point of time but predictive analytics and ai we have a long 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 way to go because that understanding is also not there people people don't understand because we are bureaucrats not technocrats so people don't really really understand and uh, we have to move a lot 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 towards this particular goal to understand what is ai and what is so this chat gpt is a fantastic tool which we have all seen and a lot of people must be have been using i mean i use it for my daily purpose for preparing notes and uh, you know uh, for making slides and whatever you can think of so that is something immense i mean that generative ai which is there but in uh, government it takes time to adapt to these changes but sure in time to come i have interacted with some of my uh, counterparts who are in foreign um, uh, organizations also so uh, like uh, the british tax how they are doing it so if you are now uh, initially what ha what was happening is that when we were filing a return a tax return so you have to file that what is your total income what so those calculations you have to do i mean those informations you have to fill up now what has happened is because of this ai all those things are populated on its own based on all the sources which we have so we are giving you all the information that this is your this is your total income this is the expenses which you have done so those those things are coming on on its own so a lot of effort has gone into that it has not been an easy task so that that uh, and we are we have uh, we are going through this particular phase of change and ai it is coming up not only in income tax department you can take any department any 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 department but still we have a very long way to go that's what i would say okay uh, sir if you have some more time you would like to ask a few more questions yeah sure sure uh, sumit sumit are you there yes yeah. yeah you may proceed for your question Uh, yeah, Mr. Ashish, uh, I wanted to ask uh, uh, this question about um, IAS services in general. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah please go ahead. Yeah, so I just wanted to ask that uh, I like uh, UPSC is a very hard examination, and a lot of people. Uh, try to get into uh, try to uh, become an IAS officer or uh, let's say an IPS officer and uh, so there should be uh, like a lot of benefits to becoming an IAS or an IPS officer and uh, they should also have a, uh, you know a lot of power and they should also be doing what they do fairly so I have this question that in India lots of time a lot of the times this happens that when the police station uh, to file a report, FIR complaint, they say that okay, you can you can write the complaint and give give it to them, and then proceed, and then they say uh, it's not it's 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 being done and it's taking a long time and this and that, and in the meanwhile maybe maybe they are not taking the CCTV footage of the of the crime scene, so maybe they're delaying that, so so in in case they delay that a lot, then after 
if they if they do it later on, then the CCTV footage may not be there. So in all of this, uh, if if this is happening with somebody that somebody's filed a police complaint recently, and they want uh, they want to uh, have it proceeded, you know, uh, proceeded soon, and they want uh, they want justice soon. So how should they move ahead as an educated citizen uh, in the in the world in the in the country where we have such you know uh, you know such a well uh, you know qualified and well tested IAS and IPS officers? Yeah, thank you, Sumit. Uh, that's a very interesting question which we have asked. Like, uh, is how much awareness is there in the society? Like, uh, that is very very important. And uh, today, India has moved from being, uh, let me say, the education in India per se has moved in a not for direction. People have become more aware with the social media coming in. People have become more aware because of the internet facilities are there. Is the government also using this particular features to interact with the people? That is the challenge which government is also facing. Do they have the infrastructure? Do they have the database management to be done to tackle all those issues? How to interact with people? So a lot of investments needs to be done from the state government. No, I don't want to get into this particular thing that there is something called state subject, and there is something called central subject, there is a tertiary, uh, tertiary subject as well. But since we have raised police issue, which is specifically a state subject, so state, it is all the effort which the state has to make in this particular investment in the AI, ML tools, whatever they want, so that how efficiently they can interact with the people and the CCTV footage or whatever you have said, the evidence collection, the SOP would be there for having a fairness in the investigation which needs to be done. Now, there are a lot of cases which you must be hearing that uh, since we are in the center, we are going for the people who are the opposition parties are being targeted by some of the in premier institutions, maybe from income tax, ED or CBI, they are always targeting certain section of the people, but they are not targeting the political people who are in power at this point of time. Fair enough that that, that is uh, happening. I'm not denying that that is not happening. But since people are becoming more and more aware, this thing is also highlighted everywhere and it is known to everyone. See, end of the day, we are executives. So there are, we are the executives and we have to follow the whatever as per law things has to be done. And we have been told to do that. So people follow that particular way and we have to take orders from the above what is coming up and also as per law which is uh, which is plausible and possible so that's how things are happening but yes policy decisions are also being made by us by the bureaucrats only with the help of legislature and the judiciary that this policy has to be taken up and that is being passed by the parliament accordingly and in the state government as well that uh, how things have to be tackled and made the, see, end of the day, the idea of any bill is to help the people, to make the people, uh, this, uh, to make India a better place. So that is how things are coming up. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I understand what you're trying to say. I think it's uh, it's on the most broader perspective, you know, central and is. Uh, uh, you know, from the central and the state government. But what do you suggest as an uh, I, IRS level officer, if something uh, were to happen to, let's say, your family members or your closer family uh, or your, let's say, somebody you know, what would you suggest them if the police officer is delaying the case, is not properly writing the complaint uh, of the of, of some, some something, you know, some sort of crime happened, if they are saying this or that? So how should one proceed as a as a normal cit as a general citizen? In, in such a case? So, there are two ways to look into it, Sumit. First of all, uh, it would be interesting that why should, what, uh, what, uh, what sort of thing you are having to judge a case? I mean, are you, are you that, are you having that sort of experience or do you have been given those sort of training that do you have all the knowledge of I, IPC, CRPC and so on and so forth? What are the texts available? these police people are handling these sort of cases day in and out there is a very very important issue which is called the manpower issue which is present ubiquitously in all the departments 
so there is no man hour which man, uh, the, the number of people who should be there posted it they are not there so i am working with people uh, with half a inspector or half a uh, ta or half staff or half this and half that one quarter or sometimes so it becomes very difficult people uh, people are not available at those places where they are required that needs to be taken up so a lot of more recruitment is required it is very top heavy but actually from ssc which is another examination through which all those other staff comes in in the government uh, that from that staff people are not staying because they also want to go up so they don't want to join as an ssc and remain in that particular service so the inspectors and all that uh, the staff group c staff and group d staff if you can say and group b also uh there is a huge shortage of staff everywhere so that is actually going to affect uh all of us like as i have told you that why i am using this chat gpt because i don't have staff to draft all those things which i want so i just tell them these are the things and you make a slide out of it what whatever method out of it so so these things are there these are some practical challenges which people face and especially as you have pointed out specifically police that is that there is a problem that if i am personally facing a problem yes because i am in service i know a lot of people who whom i can turn into and i can call make a call and do something about because you are my batchmate you help me out and or you help the person out that is definitely there that that will be taken care of but also the same thing is also for the any uh, any person who is a normal citizen also they can also approach police station with as much ease and comfort there is no problem i believe especially in delhi i don't think there is a problem because end of the day it is all education matters like people also understand the police also understand that people who are more educated they are more aware they come all with this camera and phone and what what is going on they will put it on social media then their boss will come to know and things will become complicated at any point of time yeah thank you thank you i in the police as it should know that i um, sorry, i could file in sorry to interrupt you uh, we can't take uh, this question any longer and i request all the other uh, audience who is asking the question to remain with the topic as we have time constraints so we can't take more questions we'll just ask the avnish the, to ask the last question and then we'll end the session avnish you could please go ahead hello sir i want to know about the yeah avnish Sir, now in 2023 result came. It's uh, very difficult to crack the prelims only. This is first stage only. Then how we can tackle that prelims, sir? Please suggest any ideas on this regard. See, prelims is like uh, the first test where most of the candidates are uh, being rejected by UPSC, as I have told you. That UPSC exam is an exam for rejection. i believe some 7 to 8 lakh people apply for prelims examination and some 20 odd or 25000 people are getting selected for the prelims so you can understand that there's a big uh, chunk of uh, the population which gets uh, rejected in this particular examination so prelims uh, you need to know um, something about everything that is what prelims is and uh, so you have to have some shallow knowledge about every topic what is whatever is being discussed yeah i understand that some questions are very tricky these days where you find all the answers all the four answers looks very similar that which answer has to be uh, taken up but i think there are a lot of questions in iit also which uh, we are seeing uh, when we are giving exams all of them look very same and we have to find out that uh, what is the correct answer thankfully uh, they have not kept that multiple choice question where more than one answer is correct or uh, in some questions there there are some uh, question in upsc where more than one option is correct they write 1 2 and 3 above or 1 and 2 or something like that so it becomes very confusing so you need to uh, practice keep on practicing and keep on uh, discussing you keep on what i'm saying practicing means that you keep on give examinations the test paper whatever is available wherever you can see like you can get some information try to uh, get in your mind and there's a time table which you have to make for yourself actually i mean i have a, i had a time table at one point of time that which i used to follow religiously that i have to get up at 6 o'clock and i have to do this thing only at that point of time like there's, there's an examination at 9:30 if it starts at 9:30 then at 9:30 i have to give this particular examination when i'm giving the test also so i i, I was taking those things very very seriously and i mean it was imbibed in my system automatically that at 9:30 the exam starts so then I, on that day i will do this particular thing 
so weekly i used to take some tests for my own uh, benefit so you need to do that there is no other way i could uh, you can so you have to tune your mind with the time also so you aisa nahi hai ki main raat bhar padhunga aur subah phir dekhunga kya ho raha hai and all that no that's not right so uh, night out karne ka koi fayda nahi i don't think uh, that that's going to help so you have to tune your uh, mind along with the timing of the examination hours Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, Tushar is our uh, PR and sponsorship head, so we'll take this last question and then we'll end. Sure, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. Sure, sure. Tushar, please ask your question uh, briefly. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, sir. How you maintain your CGPA after with your job? Abhi, Abhi ka. so uh, as i have told you that i am good at math so math is something which i am very comfortable so in math and statistics i have been getting s uh, for both of them in both 1 and 2 so theek thak chal raha hai bhai baki wo computational thinking and uh, python mein thoda sa gad pad hai that that I, so computational thinking i got a d in uh, uh, python also i am pretty okay Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, That was a very personal question, actually. <laughs> so yeah, this to uh, bring it brings to end of the session today due to time constraint mostly, and I hope most of your queries must have been answered by now. I acknowledge that many of you might have wished to hear more, but let us keep it for some other day. and so we would really love to have you here again soon and now i would like to invite president of our society kuwar upwan for vote of thanks uh thank you chanchal for inviting me and uh, thank you so much sir i i really thank you a lot uh, we have been planning to do this session since so long and i remember the day uh, like we released a, a form for recruitment during the inception of the society and sir uh, fill the form with the response that i have cleared uh, so and so day and uh, if you require any help i'll be there so i was uh, that's so sweet of you sir to reply on the form and uh, we really thank you a lot for uh, giving your time from your busy schedule and uh, uh, i extremely thank my dedicated team and all the other attendees for uh, joining the session and uh, staying with us throughout and uh, thank you again sir for sharing your experiences and uh, uh, we are really very honored and grateful to have you uh, your presence uh, here today is truly a beacon of uh, hope for us and also an encouragement for us to always strive for a better uh, a better position in our life and to do something valuable uh, worthwhile uh, as as we go ahead thank you for gracing the session with your presence sir and looking forward to have you uh, meet you some day in person and i also thank all the other person who have joined uh, hope to wish you to wish i wish uh, we may uh, meet some day in paradox or uh, anywhere else and uh, thank you again for uh, joining it yeah over to you sanjay thank you thank you everyone for give, giving me such a, an opportunity to interact with all of you it was a very interesting and nice session i hope i hope that this could have been done earlier also but uh, due to some constraint or other it was not possible but eventually we made it which is good to have a start with and uh, uh, now that i am coming back to the department and specifically to the systems directorate where data is going to be one of the prominent thing i would try to use this uh, ai and ml things which we have been learning with uh, with my team which will be assigned to be here once i join and i look forward yeah thank you so much and yes, i sir. wish all of you all the best in your life and um, enjoy this course which is a very interesting course i must all say that this is going it's a very interesting course and uh, i'm looking forward yeah thank you, thank you so much on, sir on this note i inform the closer of the session uh, everyone please leave and also we have shared a link of our social media handles and a group you could join for uh, more information there and for our for forthcoming sessions you could get the information from there Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir.
Thank you, sir.